I want to review this whole LEGO Animal Crossing theme as one video. This is something that I've been the most excited about from LEGO out of everything because Animal Crossing is a franchise that means so much to me. It's been one of my favorite Nintendo franchises since my childhood. So this is a dream come true and so much better than that Mario line which took this electronic weird figure route. This takes a minifigure route which I really love but there is a huge similarity with the LEGO Mario line. LEGO Mario and LEGO Animal Crossing still use the same system, shockingly enough. Now, there's no electronics in these, but LEGO Animal Crossing uses the same plate system with those round plates that connect via two by whatever plates. I gotta say, those are pretty frustrating to transport. On the other hand, though, this makes it so versatile and so easy to just build a village just by rearranging one plate next to another. You don't have to go the whole route of connecting them and having them disconnect when you try to transport them and just carefully transport each individual one. But let's start with the biggest of the sets. This is the Nook's Cranny and Rosie's house set for $75. I've seen some people complain about the size of Nook's Cranny. The design of this, I think, is a little bit downsized compared to the game in terms of the exterior. But I really like how this turned out. I think this is very spacious in the interior, which really works. The exterior is absolutely gorgeous from the front where it has this perfect mesh of colors and is all accurate to the game. There's one huge change between this and the video game, which is that the front sign doesn't have any text on it. This makes sense because, well, Lego releases around the world and they can't make Nook's Cranny in a billion different languages. Now, it would be cool if they did that and you could like order online or something like that. And I hope somehow they do that in the future, but I am perfectly accepting of this print, which is a lovely two by six tile. And it captures that Nook's Cranny front sign design perfectly. And speaking of front signs, there's a bulletin board, another excellent tile print now on a two by three. You could also see how that billboard is adjustable. And just like Lego Mario, every print across these sets are a print, they're not stickers. So yeah, they're not using stickers, which I adore that they're not using stickers. This right here is the recycle bin, as I always call it in the game, and the design of that is a print as well. You can remove the lid there, and inside is a carrot, which is kind of funny. There's no top to the carrot though. But yeah, you could fit some more stuff inside there, but it's not as spacious as say the recycling bin in the game where you could fit like just about anything at the front there. From the sides, this looks okay. I do kind of wish the roof was a little bit more complete. Like I like how it's built in theory and how they have this on kind of a tilt right there with those riot shield pieces as I call them. But it just looks really weird from the side and while it looks fine from the front, from the side, it looks like the roof is just not complete. But again, where are you gonna see this much on the side? You're gonna either display this from the front or show off the back interior. At the other side, there's that watering can, which has a plant at the top that is just on a circular stud with a hole in it. There you go, that's much better removed. This window right here is not something that can open, but of course those doors do open. And inside, there's some really nice prints. Two exclusive prints, one with this uh, fish food right here, and then the other one with some seeds. Those are all one by one bricks. At the top, we have another instance of the DIY recipe. This is something that appears in more than half of the sets. And I love how this is just a printed one by two tile and it captures that design accurately from the New Horizons video game. Anyways, for the center section right here, you have this cash register print, which wow, they have like Apple Pay, NFT paying in the world of Animal Crossing. And we also have a bell print right here. This is something that appears in all of the main retail sets and I love that one by one circular tile print. Inside this little drawer right here, you could even fit a bell. In this corner right here, we have the daily sales, you know, where there's stuff that rotates each day that you could buy. And we have a plant pot right there. We also have a radio, a guitar at the front window and a bucket. Oh yeah, and in this corner right here, they do have the shovel. One thing is I kind of wish this new line gave us a new shovel or brought back that Fabuland shovel, which looks a lot more like the video game shovel than the existing Lego shovel they just use here. 
The other piece at the back right here is just a broom. As for Rosie's house and the surrounding builds, there's a street lamp right here, which is nice to get. That's a build that uh, replicates the one from the Julian's Party set, which has some prints from some other themes like the sugar cookie design right there and the waffle design. See some tea saucers and such. There's also a translucent pink parasol at the top right there. That's nice to get. It's appeared in the Lego Friends line in that color before. As for the front, this is something I really adore with the buildings of this Animal Crossing line. You could pop out the windows and swap them out with some alternate designs very easily. For example, there's this blue window which appears in the Isabelle's Visit set, or in this set in particular, they give you this different window frame right here instead with a rectangular top. That's really cool. And you get two of those in the pink colors. So I really like how each set with a building has two sets of windows so you can kind of choose which ones you want. Anyways, there's a small build for a bike for Rosie. And then we also have an orange tree. I really like the use of those circular little ball pieces with the receiving end right there. That's really clever for just the oranges of Animal Crossing. And you also have a mushroom and a flower at the front right there. Also a flower at this side. I do think the roof for this build is a little bit better. It feels a lot more complete with the brick build right here. I mean, that looks basically perfect. You would just have to imagine, you know, a whole build covering the back. And honestly, I love the interior of Rosie's house. The design of this uses purple, which is like my favorite color. And I love KK Bubblegum, which is one of the many KK tracks. That design is a lovely two by two exclusive print. The most minor of nitpicks is that it attaches via this one by one brick in a gray coloring. That should have been white, because you know, it just does not look right. They tell you to put it this way, you'll probably have to display it this way if that really annoys you like it does with me. Now the instructions encourage a rearrangement of the furniture in this building. This is actually my own choice for the display. You could rearrange this as you'd like. You see, very easy to remove and very modular in just how this works with, you know, this being a furniture piece. We love the quilt on there and the colors once again. <laughs> the interior of this is just beautifully colored. Love the color scheme here. And also this lamp right here, it's nice to see that uh, glittery translucent pink again. Another part that's easy to remove as one build altogether. There's this love seat right here. Another part that's pretty easy to remove as a build altogether. This small table right here with a cup. And all we got left is the range in the corner. Again, very modular in how easy it is to remove. And then this little stand with a potted plant. So yeah, I like that customization aspect to it. And look how easily it is to just make a completely different, but still great build inside this interior right here. Let's see, just put this right here. There you go. Very modular, just awesome. I'm loving the styling of these houses. This is the only set of the wave with Nook. The design of this using the New Horizons Hawaiian shirt, which I really love. I also love seeing those dual molded arms right there, as well as the use of the mid legs. This is also the only set with the money bag with the design from the game. That's really awesome as a print. There's one problem though, this tail. This does not look like the Tanuki tail of Nook from the games. Instead, they just used the raccoon tail that they've used for a rocket raccoon. That does not fit if you ask me. Like they didn't even do the multi colors that the actual tail has. The design of Rosie is fantastic, except the accessory hole is very noticeable there. Like, okay, I, <laughs> the side of a helmet, okay. The top of Tom Nook, that's fine. Okay, actually, now looking at both of them, these accessory holes are getting more and more annoying. The one for Isabel is perfect. It's at the side, so you don't see it from the front. So yeah, it's much more obnoxious with these two characters in this set. Regardless, Rosie has a really adorable face. Like I like the expression they have for the figure. I also like the torso print, as well as that one by one bell print, which is something you'll see a lot throughout the other sets. I think it comes in all of the sets. And that is a design, which you get an extra of since it is a one by one tile. And now we can get to what might be my favorite of the bunch. This is Isabel's visit. 
Don't worry, we'll rank them all at the very end. For now, this is the $40 set with 389 pieces and two minifigures. I have a bias though, I love Isabel, and Isabel translated perfectly into minifigure form. There's no accessory hole that's really visible here. Instead, again at the side right there, that works so well. The adorable chipper expression on her face, I just love with the little tooth showing. Of course, I hope in the future we get like a closed mouth expression, and I'm sure we will because this is one of the many Isabel outfits. Classic design too, with uh, the torso there from uh, New Leaf. And then we do have the skirt design, which is the one from uh, Trolls World Tour. Short skirt, love that. And also, is this the first time we're getting these legs in like the sand yellow coloring? That's really interesting. Big, chunky, hard plastic new molded head for her, which works so well. And some back torso printing as well. Love how the coloring continues to the back of the headpiece. Just a fantastically detailed minifigure. Fauna looks excellent as well. Her accessory hole isn't as present either, which is pretty cool. The design of this has some really nice printing with the colors at the front of the face for Fauna. You can even see how there is a mouth molded on, which is a little bit hard to notice at first. The torso print is new as well. And we do get the mid legs in that brown color, which is nice. Another instance of that one by one bell printing at the back right here. You can see how she even has some more print at the back of her head, which I really appreciate as well as some more torso printing. So far, I think this is my favorite of all the builds as well, where it's just the quintessential Animal Crossing house. Like this could even be a house for the villager player which I kind of wish we did get villager minifigures, but I get it, we have to get the animal minifigures because there's like a billion ways to customize your character and Lego doesn't want to pick favorites. The design of this captures the house of Fauna, which the design of that is a more neutral color than say Rosie's house. And at 40 bucks, this definitely captures the most essence out of all the sets for Animal Crossing. It's kind of weird, but like, I feel like this covers so much ground. You have a gift in the sky, a DIY workbench, so that's something that's been in all the games and something that has been in just the most recent release with New Horizons. The design of that using this one by two print once again, which we just saw in the previous set. Love seeing that for the DIY recipe straight from the game, perfect as a one by two tile. You get a slingshot accessory, which is perfect to shoot down the balloon. You also get a hammer as well as a shovel. The shovel design again, kind of annoys me, but whatever. The design of this apple tree right here actually uses these clip pieces so that you can clip on the apples and easily remove them. And I really love the shaping of the branches right here, and the leaves and everything. It gives me some vibes of that classic Fabulant piece as well, so more Fabulant-esque designs. I didn't point this out before, but the tree trunk piece is a new piece for Animal Crossing. I really like how they modify that two by two, little bottom circular piece right there, as well as a lovely new print for a one by one fossil design. That's perfect, and I love that you get an extra one of those. And it's funny because that piece, as well as the Pitfall, come in the same other set, which is the Bunny's Outdoor Adventures. So if you get that set, you get more copies of these pieces, which I'm not complaining about. Anyways, let me put that apple back on. In the middle there, we do have a little pumpkin garden, which does recall some of the build of that uh, poly bag, which is Maple's pumpkin garden. So I guess if you get this set, you could maybe skip that poly bag aside from, you know, the exclusive Maple minifigure, which is so freaking awesome that they include an exclusive minifigure in a poly bag in 2024. I do like the watering can design, which appears throughout these sets. And then there's a little mailbox back here, which does have a one by two print of a letter. Would be cool if that was like the Smash logo right there, right? Do we all agree? But unfortunately it's not. <laughs> then we have some flowers right there. Some flowers at the side as well. And once again, two different sets of windows where we have those brown windows right there with a square design. And then you could swap those out very easily and put these blue windows, which have smooth top up there. Let's remove this one at the side too. Yeah, I mean, I think the brown windows fit the most with just the rest of the color scheme of the set. If it was red or something, that would probably work because of the red door frame, which this is a new piece. I love this door frame right here. 
Again, recalling back to some Fabuland, which is crazy. And that just opens up very easily. Has some uh, clipped on connections to that piece right there. As for the roof design, much like Rosie's house, which just uses the same format essentially, it does have a really nice side design compared to say the Nook's Cranny. On this side right here, you do have a plant and some flowers that I think I might've pointed that one out earlier. You can see more of that uh, rounded off roof design that I like. Inside, not as gorgeous as uh, Rosie's house, but still, I do like a lot that's going on in here. Like this is the only set with the Nook phone from New Horizons. Great exclusive print. And I like how they even have a little journal right here, which you could open it up. Reminds me of the save diary from uh, Wild World. And then for the bed quilt, again, not as nice as Rosie's house, but uh, still a cool pattern. We have a two by two print of the KK slider friendship picture. I love that. Always wanted to get those friendship pictures in my town, but I guess I never connected with NPCs as well. We have that little plant in the corner right there. Little range as well as a fountain, I mean, sink and then a table with some more tea designs, as well as a donut and a cookie print, which have come from other themes before. Again, much like Rosie's house, this is very easy to rearrange. These are modular furniture pieces, which I like that idea. And you can kind of make your own Animal Crossing house just by moving everything around. Ah, oh, gosh darn it, this does not really work, does it? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You're gonna have to like squeeze through there and the bed is so close to the range. I have to say it's so much fun rearranging furniture inside the given sets that they have already. This is already working. I'm translating some of my fun from the game because like I love the house designing aspect of Animal Crossing. So LEGO did a great job with making the furniture so modular and easy to rearrange as well as the interior is spacious without being say too spacious so that it's overpriced. Personally, I wouldn't have mind if these were a little bit more expensive so that they could have bigger interiors, but just a tad more. Like this could have been a $50 set with a slightly bigger interior. Apply that percentage increase to say the Nook set. So how the bloomed gift works is that they use this clear pillar piece right here, which, okay, I mean, it doesn't really blend in, but whatever. The design at the top, having this small build for the flying present build. And this design is very simple. You could open it up. And inside you have a little painting kit. So that's another item from the game that counts as furniture. So that's really cool. And next up is the $30 Captain's Island boat tour, which has 233 pieces and two minifigures, including one of the most popular villagers, which is Marshall. When the reveal first happened, I underestimated how popular Marshall is. <laughs> but yeah, not one of my favorite villagers. Still, this is the headpiece that they use for Maple in that poly bag, which I can't wait to get my hands on. New torso print as well. It's cool you have the short legs and tan, which don't come on too many characters. There's been characters like Dobby who have used it before. And we also get a totally new piece for a squirrel tail. That's really cool. And I can see some Marvel fans trying to use that for like squirrel girl, spray painted or something. At the very top, oh my gosh, accessory hole. What are we gonna do? The cap and minifigure is perfect as well. I love that they include this two by two print of the KK songbook. That's really awesome. Love the torso with the Hawaiian shirt. Love the dual molded arms right there with the blue sleeves. And yeah, those lime green hands are actually accurate to the game where he has like two different shades of green. He also has short dark green legs, which are really nice. Some nice back torso printing. And at the very top, Again, an accessory hole. When I first saw the main terrain build of this set, I was a little bit disappointed in how messy it looked and it didn't really capture the vibe of, say, those islands that you visit on Captain's tours. But now that I have the set all built and I've thought about the set more, I actually like this set more as just an expansion to the village itself. I think this is better as a set with the other sets than a set that stands alone. On its own, it just comes off a bit confusing, 
with all the other sets, it adds as the shore tier village as well as more of that back expansion. For the shoreline build occupying most of the pieces, this does feel like something that should be maybe closer to $20 than a $30 set. This set provides a small little dock, which I actually like how throughout these sets they have small bouts of water that have these little white triangle pieces. Those are actually the pizza slice pieces. But it's cool to just add some, I guess, greebling to the water. I know that's not the right term, but you get what I mean. Water texture? <laughs> it looks kind of cool, and I haven't seen that in many other sets. The coconut tree is one of the more repetitive parts of this build. I like getting different fruits throughout the sets. This having the coconut is cool, but you do build that twice in the exact same build, which is quite annoying. But I mean, that is realistic to Animal Crossing where all the trees look the same, <laughs> so that's fun. But there's a total of four coconuts in the set, which are just lime green unprinted minifigure heads. We also get another instance of that DIY 1x2, which I really love. Love getting that stump piece as well, which the coconut trees don't use. Instead, they use those column circular 2x2s. We also get that hermit crab that was introduced in, I think, series 19. Don't quote me on that one more of that wave at the front, which I really like the texturing there again. Again, I'm gonna say middle section, but this is really my arrangement. This middle section right here, there's a small coconut build as well that you can just drink from there. Then we have some instances of these fallen leaf pieces, which I really like for just the texture of the Animal Crossing ground to change things up and not just use the bases from the Lego Mario line. Having the step ladder there, on the top floor is one of my favorite details of the set, which is a hidden money rock. So this removes, and inside there's a print of that one by one circular tile with the bell right there. Also at the very top, there's some bamboo stockings, which this set is the only set to include bamboo in it. So that's really cool. Anyways, for this section over here, we have a small lounge area with some beach chairs as well as an adjustable umbrella. It's that piece that they've used in Lego Friends before, translucent pink, which is very interesting. And you can adjust that with that hinge connection. There's a sandwich, which looks really yummy. Now I'm hungry. A campfire, and honestly, I kind of wish they just gave us a new fishing pole piece because the fishing pole piece they use in this set is an existing piece that just looks kind of clunky with everything. It's way too big for Marshall which is a little weird. And the set includes this orange fish to catch. However, the opposite journey kind of happened with the boat for me where I, at first I thought the boat was cool, but I didn't really take a good look at it. And honestly, the final build kind of sucks. I mean, just compared to the look from the game, they use this out of date boat base build, which gives a much more, I guess, uh, less technological design to it. This needed something like a new piece for a small speedboat base or even just use one of those small junior ones. Okay, maybe that would have been a little bit too chonky, but something could have worked instead of this specific base build. Because of that, it doesn't really capture the dual colors of the boat, except LEGO tries to compensate by putting the red and the blue at the motor right here, which just does not work. It actually becomes a bit jarring, especially with that pink piece that they put on the jumper there. Thankfully, that seems like a little gift or something. It's not really specified that you could just remove there. So it doesn't have as much of a jarring combination of colors. It's even more weird with that light blue they use at the base there. So yeah, not really a fan of this speed boat. I do like this build of this back motor, which does have a little steer to it. That's cool. You have the flag at the top. I also like the build for this uh, thermostat. No, what is it called? I was about to say thermometer, thermos. It, it's a thermos. And that's something I haven't really seen from LEGO. And with this new piece they're using from the LEGO Marvel CMF Series 2 from last fall, that's a clever part usage. And I like the touch of the lantern at the front. Then there's the 164 piece $20 Bunnies Outdoor Activity Set. This is a little hidden gem that I don't see too many people appreciating. It might be my third favorite outside of the two biggest sets. It's the value and consistency that really goes a long way here. At the front, there's a campfire and they do have a print on that log, which isn't from the Animal Crossing line, but still nice to get. 
a little radio, which is kind of like a throwback to an old school Lego radio from like the 90s. That's one of the least detailed radios I've seen in this year, 2024. But yeah, we have the campsite from Animal Crossing New Horizons where new villagers will stay. This design actually uses a really interesting technique of just these tile pieces. A lot of times they've used, say, like fabric pieces for tents. And I like the tile design a lot better because the fabric's kind of annoying to apply. Inside, we just have a little bunk for a minifigure. Beyond that, we have this raised platform right here, which you would have to use a ladder to get across. So I guess you can only get across there from this side right here. But uh, in this corner, we do have some accessories like the vaulting pole introduced in New Horizons. The shovel, which again, I have my grievances with where I feel like this should have been a new piece. And this axe, which does feel undersized as well. Kind of weird when they did have some bigger axes before. Anyways, up on this platform, we have the only instance in this first wave of a tarantula, which is kind of funny. You know, that's something you want to avoid or catch really carefully in the Animal Crossing games. Then we have some trees right here, which are a little bit simpler than, say, the fruit trees. That's okay. That's actually accurate to some of the diverse trees of the games. I do really like this small mini waterfall. That is something you would see in New Horizons. Again, great usage of these white tile pizza slice pieces to kind of have a break in waves. As I said, greebling in the water. This design up here kind of got dislocated a bit. But this is a little play feature where it mimics a money rock in the game where if you destroy some rocks inside, you might find a couple bells. And while you only have one to be put inside here in the instructions, you do get an extra one as an extra piece in the set. I also really love the butterfly design, which I haven't seen this particular design in any of the other sets. There's some flowers at the back right there. And if you notice, there's another little part right here which might seem confusing. This little Technic connection right here is actually a part so that you can make the minifigure volt pole over this gap of water. So take your minifigure, we'll get Bunny, and just give them the vaulting pole. And you can put that just right in here. And now your minifigure can vault across. Isn't that kind of fun? I like that. That's creative. Didn't need any electronic stuff like the Mario system. That was something straight out of the game. Sorry, I'm still salty about Lego Mario, but gosh, this is really making up for it. Then again, I think back to how Lego Mario had like 20 sets at the start and this only has like five in a poly bag. Uh, imagine this had 20 sets at the start. Anyways, there is a stepping ladder right here. Again, another tool from the game that appears in some of the other sets. We also have a little pitfall once again, which appears in one other set and a fossil as well. Two great prints, not unique to the set. And then we have some Fallen Leaves, Fallen Leaves, great movie from 2023. Check it out, second favorite. Then we have this cherry tree right here. Again, keeping up with each of these sets, getting a different fruit tree. Love the shaping of the branches once again. And one thing is that this tree, you can actually remove the top part. And inside there's a piece of wood and a flower petal. I guess that's trying to imitate, you know, getting some materials from chopping down the tree or by shaking the tree. The cherries themselves are a little bit harder to pluck off than some of the other fruits, but there you go. If you watch the initial Animal Crossing reveal videos from me, clearly I don't know the popularity of some characters over others, but uh, yeah, Bunny is a character I'm not really familiar with, but I do love the design of Bunny. There's so many villagers in the Animal Crossing games. There's huge chunks, even though I played all of them that I've just never had in my village. The design has a really nice red color that I just love. And that contrasts well with that, uh, I guess, like, almost like a vanilla-ish color. It's the same color they use for, say, Krusty the Clown's pie from uh, Simpsons CMF in Dimensions. I don't know why I use that example all the time for that color, but it makes sense. Then we have a lovely torso right there. Though, dang, a lot of torsos throughout this Animal Crossing line have that type of pattern. What is it, like a flannel type pattern? There's also the only instance of this uh, bug catching net in this first wave. It is the same design, I think, even down to the color with uh, the Series 15 Skunk Pest Control Girl, if I'm not mistaken, from CMFs, but uh, I might be wrong there. And we have a, a marshmallow on a stick at the back. Some nice back torso printing. Love getting the mid legs in that red color. 
And uh, interesting that she has different colors for the hands, but uh, that still works. So yeah, great figure if you ask me. And my last is my least favorite of the bunch, which is Julian's birthday party. I will say though, this is kind of a better value than the bunny set because this is only $15. If you're a price for piece ratio person, that's for 170 pieces. While Bunny's Outdoor Activities is $20 for 164 pieces. But more so, in my opinion, this is about the same size of what's included as say the Bunny's Outdoor Adventures. From a limit of five sets in one poly bag, I want really Animal Crossing stuff. There's so much stuff we're missing that's iconic to the game that I kind of want as a set over this. But I get it because this is only a $15 set. The Julian minifigure is exclusive and this is the only set, at least in the first wave, to use that unicorn headpiece, which is really detailed. You have like a mane at the back, you have that horn at the front. The design of him does have this uh, gift of a skateboard, which I like seeing the wheels in that color. That's the more unconventional color because we have gotten a lot of skateboards with the purple topping. There is the one by one bell piece once again, which I love getting. Interesting jacket design from the game. That's pretty cool to adapt. And then at the back, even more of that design, a nice shine going on there. And then there's this uh, party hat piece. And this is one thing I forgot to say with uh, the two bigger sets, but the two bigger sets and this set include this party hat piece. And it's kind of like an expansion where, okay, if you buy those sets, you could continue the story of Julian's birthday and kind of make like one big birthday scene. I thought that was kind of cute that there's some connection between the sets. There's some presents and these three do not open. They also include another one that opens, which you kind of have Julian hold as well. And this design for the opening present inside has some bells and a little pop star set. So that's kind of cute. Some balloon builds, another instance of that lamppost build that appeared in one other set. Then we have this kind of cool string right here for these different party decorations. I mean, this has been done in a lot of sets, but I think the color combination and the pizza slice pieces work really well right here. And this just attaches to this back part of the cherry blossom tree. And yeah, the fruit tree of this set isn't a fruit, but rather the cherry blossom tree, which is kind of awesome if you ask me. It looks beautiful as a build with some pink pieces for the branches. And you can remove this little two by four section. It's a little bit rough sometimes, but uh, there's this little wood piece at the top. So that's kind of clever for when you shake the tree or whatever. The only set that wasn't sent to me is this poly bag, though we don't even know if this releases March 2024. It's really cool because this has maple and maple doesn't appear in any other set. So that's an exclusive character in a poly bag. Reflecting on this new theme and my experience with this wave, I have to say this is the most fun I've had with LEGO since like the Up House from last year. And really the most fun I've had with a new theme in a very long time. The execution of this theme is right up my alley. I love minifigures, especially cartoony minifigures with molded heads, which is every character in this series. Yeah, there's a ton of new molded heads just for these characters. It's like getting a really cool CMF series. But beyond just some wonderful minifigures, the builds feel so complete when put together as building your village. Now, one thing that I could see as a small downside is if you can't afford the bigger sets, the smaller sets just feel less complete than the bigger sets. The design of the buildings, I really adore. There are some missteps in the sizing and proportions where it's like, okay, yeah, from the side, it looks a bit awkward. Maybe some of them could have been a bit more spacious, but I think the houses especially work with how they capture an interesting shape a really nice roof design between using different types of tiles with round edges and some without, some really cool new window pieces and door pieces and some gorgeous interiors that are so easy to customize. This is something that captures the essence of the game so well. I love rearranging furniture throughout these sets. The actual Tom Nook store does feel a bit more downsized than say the houses, but it's still a really cool build with a very gorgeous exterior. I love that front right there. That just works so well with all the colors and everything. I complain a lot about Lego prices, but I don't think these are poorly priced at all. I actually think this is one of the strongest priced new licenses. Like I love the Sonic sets, but those do feel overpriced. 
though they've been doing pretty good this year. It seems like LEGO is actually adjusting the prices this year, which works for my licenses. As for my ranking, my favorite set is Isabel's Visit. I love Isabel. I love that house. My second favorite is the Tom Nook store. Keep in mind, this is a set I recommend if you only buy one set and you could buy any of the sets. But if you're tight on money, the Isabel set is such a great introduction as well. My third favorite is going to be, yeah, it's still the bunnies one. I, I might have switched between the island, but no, yeah, it's going to be bunnies. Fourth is the island one, and fifth is easily the Julian one, but I feel like I'm going too hard on that set even. So yeah, I love this theme, but let me know. Am I going too easy on this just for my love of Animal Crossing games and cartoony minifigures and buildings as sets? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you like any of these and which ones you're going to buy. Subscribe here for more LEGO videos because Animal Crossing has just got me back into LEGO, though I'll really be focusing on Animal Crossing and Sonic. I'm so excited to catch up on that theme. But also I'm very active on my food channel and my film channel. I'll see you later. Peace out. Bye.